I don't know about you guys, but I've been desperate to find out what's underneath this green wrap ever since I picked the Mercer Lager up. Why would somebody wrap a car green, which is already green underneath? Something fishy going on here. The Lamborghini Mercer Lago. My dream car, which I picked up in a not so dream state. £100,000 bought me a gated manual Mercer Lago, which is sat abandoned for seven years with no engine in it which has given us some surprises to say the least. They're literally finger tight. And even more surprises when we found out we could find cheaper parts from Ferrari. If I bought eight of these shims from Lamborghini, it would have cost 300 pound. But from Ferrari, only 47 pound and 60p. Nice saving. But despite some savings, I know that this build is going to be super expensive. But let's face it, we've all been so far into something that you just can't turn around. <laughs> oh, it's looking green, it's, it's looking green. Oh, it actually looks all right. I wonder why they put that on there. Why would they put that on? There's got to be something. It's not. But I suppose like back in the day, you know, if, like 2008, 2009, I remember my mate's dad, he had a, a Supra and that. What, and this was cool? It had a carbon wrap on the bonnet, yeah, people used to do that. <laughs> people still do that, I think. <laughs> no, Is it sanded? It's either sanded or it's vinyl. Nah, it's sanded. It is sanded. There's definitely something oh, going on there. Oh, there's some repair under this, yeah, isn't there? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Let's get it inside and we'll get this thing absolutely cooking. Then we can move on to probably more surprises and getting this bottom end built up. Now's the time to place your bets on what you think is underneath that wrap. Well, here it goes. Let's take the wrap off the whole thing. We started off with the carbon fibre wrap on the bonnet and it looks as if a lot of the car has been wet sanded, which wasn't too bad. I guess that means we could just repaint it. But then we got to the passenger side. Oh, it actually looks all right. How was I wrong? This car was far from all right. I have no idea what exactly has happened to it underneath this wrap, but it certainly isn't how it should be. And it just got better. The gift that just keeps on giving. I can't even be shocked anymore. I should just <laughs> expect it from this car. But I'm beginning to think 100 grand was a little too steep for this car. What on earth has happened to this car? I, I, I just can't, I just feel sorry for it at this point. The driver's side is a little better, but it's still <laughs> nowhere near what it should be. Well, I can see the car used to be green, but it looks like the whole thing has been wet sanded, like it's almost been prepped for paint. And then it comes to all these little bits like here, which at first I thought was filler and then primer, but it looks like it's just been wet sanded down. All of these panels are fiberglass, remember, so they're gonna look a little bit different when you sand them down compared to metal. The only explanation I could think to all these weird marks and everything is that the car was probably wrapped before, they peeled it off and it peeled a lot of lacquer off, which is why they've had to sand down loads of random parts of the car. But then they've still wet sanded the whole, the whole car as well. <laughs> I just don't know. On the passenger side though, there's no denying that there's been some sort of repair to this side, whether it's gone into a wall or another car's hit it. But this, I don't know how much of this is gonna be filler. I guess we'll find out when we probably take a door card off and we can see whether the door's all caved in. I don't know, but it sounds normal, but you can see there's definitely been a masking line along the top of the door. So the Mercer Lago just gets better and better. And in perfect timing, my dad just turned up. <laughs> well, at least he spoke the truth. Whilst I was doing this, I received a Facebook message from somebody who used to work at Everyman Racing. And he seems to think if it's the same car he's thinking of, then somebody had to adjust the gear linkage on it years ago. And instead of dropping the gearbox down to try and do it, they just cut a hole in the transmission tunnel. <laughs> it just gets better. But I have actually had a look. And I can't see anything just yet, but we'll investigate that later. For now, we need to get back onto the engine. We'll... Uh, We'll come back to this. So let's pick up where we left off from, on the second head of the engine. We were adjusting the gaps between the camshaft lobes 
and the valves by putting in these shims here which are all different sizes. You put the camshaft in, torque it all down and then measure the gap between the two with a feeler gauge. We had to calculate what size shim we needed based on the gap that was already there and turns out we needed to order some more shims from Lamborghini. If we was going to order one of these it was £30.95p each plus that we found them from Ferrari at £5.95p each. Now we just gotta see whether they actually work. And so far, so good. The Ferrari shims seem to sit in place as good as the Lamborghini ones. All we gotta do now is pop the camshafts in, put the cam caps back in the correct order as they wasn't before, and then measure the gap and make sure it's perfect. Now, if it wasn't for Scott telling us that the Ferrari shims are the same as the Lamborghini ones, and finding a website that sold us this, we wouldn't have saved this massive amount. Which just goes to show you how important websites are nowadays. And that's why if your company doesn't have one, or you have a bad one then Squarespace today's sponsor of the video is here to help. Squarespace do everything from websites to online stores to marketing tools and analytics it really is the all-in-one platform to build and run your business. Whether you've had experience of building a website before or no experience at all, Squarespace has made it accessible to anyone. There's loads of templates to choose from and once you've got your template, you can go in there and you can drag and drop your own logos in there, your own photos, and begin to make a website look like your own. Here's me creating a website promoting my second channel. And I can even embed the videos from YouTube onto the website as well. And not only that, I can see what the website would look like on a mobile device. So when you need a website, go to squarespace.com or just click the link in the description box below. And when you're ready to launch, use code Matt Armstrong and that's going to give you 10% of your first website or domain name. I think I'm going to be here a little longer. We are looking all good on both heads of the engine now. So we can tick this off. But now we're back on to the bottom end of the engine where the crankshaft is just about ready to go in until we found something else. As you know by now, the chap who rebuilt this engine before replaced a lot of the stuff you would normally replace when rebuilding an engine, like these big end bearings in the bottom of the comrades. But there is something that he didn't replace. And that was these main shell bearings here, which the crankshaft sits on. You can see they've got a little oil stain in the middle and they just look a little worn compared to the rest of the shell bearings that he's put in. Now, the only reason we could think of why he's not replaced these is because each of them are 141 pound and 96 P and there's five on the bottom and there's five on the top. Unfortunately, we can't find these anywhere. They're specially made for this Mercialago engine and I think they're the same in the Diablo engine. So, well, we had to buy them. The only good part about this is that, well, they're easy to install. We just got to remove the old shells, clean up the surface, and then put the new shells in with some assembly lube. And we could just about lift the crankshaft in place. Now there's also a measurement that we need to check between the big end bearing and the crankshaft but this is way too small for a feeler gauge. So we put that little red strip in called a plasti gauge, taut the comrod caps up to spec which will then squash the plasti gauge and the measurement we're looking for is anywhere between 0.024mm and 0.067mm. Then what we've got to do is loosen the conrod caps off and we can see where the plastic gauge has been squashed. And the width of this will tell us how big or small the gap is between the bearings. And it's looking like the gap is 0 0.050, which is nicely between 0 0.024 and 0 0.067. So we know everything is all good with the crankshaft and the big end bearings. Once we've checked the gaps on all of them, we can begin to fit the conrod caps connecting the comrods to the crankshaft. And as we know, this is not coming off now, we can add Loctite to the conrod cap bolts as well. As it mentions in the manual, we can then lift the rest of the crank housing onto the bottom end of the engine. But before we do this, we have to make sure the mating surface is nice and clean. And in the manual, it states we should be using Loctite 518 on the mating surface. And this Loctite 574 now identifies as 518. <laughs> 
But no, in all seriousness, my dad says that he's used this Loctite before and he's had no issues with it at all. It is a really thin Loctite. It's not a sealant. This Loctite is here just to fill any small imperfections between the mating point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Here we go. I can almost smell the Italian emissions. This thing is starting to come together now. Next step is to torque up all the crankshaft housing bolts. And you have to do this in a certain order to make sure you don't damage the housing. Also, whilst we're there, this drive shaft at the bottom of the engine, which connects to the rear diff, and then also the prop shaft, which runs to the gearbox at the front of the engine, felt a little rough. And there's only two bearings which need replacing. And they were about £11 each from Lamborghini. So to remove this drive shaft, we just had to take out two circlips, and we could knock the shaft out of the housing. We popped the new bearings in the housing, and we used the old bearings to knock them into place. Of course, with some assembly lube. I imagine if we didn't do this, there would be a lot of drivetrain noise when driving this car. And the only noise I want to be hearing from this car is that V12 exhaust. Okay, we're moving forward, which is what we wanted. We've got one complete bottom end of the engine all built up and a nice, smooth spinning drive shaft. But guess what? we've found even more things. <laughs> right here is the oil pump for the engine. The oil pump is probably one of the most vital parts of it. If this fails, the whole engine fails. So we cannot risk anything on this. The chap who rebuilt the engine also rebuilt the oil pump. And uh, well, to spin the gears, you need these wood roof keys on there. So these actually remove there. So there's two recesses there where this thing would go in place. Now in that one, was that one. And in this one, well, there was one that didn't fit. He's just put that in there. And we think he's probably lost the proper woodruff key. And we've just found out where this one has came from, which doesn't fill us with much confidence. <laughs> Sort of a key. Don't worry, don't worry. I've got one over here. Here you go, mate. Just use this one. Oh, perfect. It's a bit, it's a bit small, isn't it? Nah, don't worry. It's, it's only an oil pump. That's exactly what we thought has possibly happened here. The woodruff key in the crankshaft is missing and we finally found it <laughs> and it was inside the oil pump. So we don't know how well this is put together. We think there's possibly a circuit that should be where this bearing is and we're just not gonna trust it really, we, we can't. So we think it's best in this situation just to play it safe and order a brand new one. Being that these are a common problem to fail on the Mercia Largo anyway, we don't want that failing on us being that we've rebuilt the full engine. It would help if we had an exploded diagram of the oil pump, but they just don't come about. And for peace of mind, it's going to cost me £2,314.45p plus VAT. But it's not a risk I'm willing to take, so I'm going to buy a new oil pump. But moving back to the car, I'm desperate to find out whether the chap on Facebook was right about that hole in the transmission tunnel. Right, we're going to find out whether this has got a hole. I mean, anything is possible. Regardless of the outcome, we need to stay positive. There's no point getting down about anything rebuilding this car because it's only going to produce negative outcomes. What are we, what are we saying? Hole or no hole? Do you know with the way this car's looking, mm -hmm. I'd say they've definitely got a hole. And that's what I've learned with a lot of the builds I've done before. There's no way I thought when I was doing the Aston Martin dashboard it was going to go back in. But a stay positive, work through it, and somehow managed to do it. And I'm hoping we get the same outcome with this car. And now we're about to find out, mm, possibly the worst. Wow. 
Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Turns out, the guy on Facebook, he, he was right. Take a look at this. It just gets better. <laughs> look, there's literally, you can see where they've cut out. Oh look, there's even holes here. What are they for? Oh my god. So they've literally cut out a square. I mean it I mean they've put it back together and they've siliconed it back together. Look at these brackets. Oh my god. So they've cut out a square for what it looks like to get to some kind of gear linkage. I think the gear linkage is on top of the gearbox. Actually you can see here where the gear linkage runs, you can see like the bulge. So they must run down there and then they've adjusted the gear linkage. But instead of lowering down the gearbox to do it, they've decided to cut a hole. And we can't even blame the guy who built the engine because this is a different guy. <laughs> Just realized as well, the whole body is like carbon fiber, isn't it? It's a, or like kind of fiberglass. So that's why you, you can't weld it shut. They've literally just chopped a frame out. Is that like structural? Surely that's got to be structural. And I mean, these brackets, they are definitely like Lamborghini. I mean, I can't see it having any sort of negative effect in a, effect in a crash, but I mean, this whole thing is built as one and you can't just buy a section of the monocoque now, can you? I mean, well, well done guys. <laughs> we're intrigued to find out what they were trying to get at with the gear linkage. We've found it. So you sit here, you're in the driver's seat, you're in your gated manual mercy logo. Boom, gear one, gear two, gear three. Oh, something's happened and something needs adjusting. This thing needs adjusting, which has got a couple of bolts here. I don't know, some kind of gear linkage. So what do you do instead of lower the gearbox down to get to it? You cut a hole in the body of the car <laughs> to get to that. <laughs> Thanks guys. Surely that is it now. There's, there's going to be no more surprises. We've, we've surely covered everything. I can't, uh, it can't get worse from here, surely. Really on a mission now to save the manual Merchant Argo. It's up from here, which is why we've made this t-shirt, Save the Manuals. You may have seen it on the second channel. And one of you who buys one of these is going to be doing the first turn of the key when we get the engine in. We're gonna send you down here if you bought one of these t-shirts. Thanks so much for all your support on all these videos. I can't thank you all enough. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. Best to make sure I do this properly, eh, because... Yeah. Well, you should have been doing it all a bit properly. <laughs> Ego, mate, just use that. Fuck. <laughs>